It was my first time here. It was cold. I was scared to death. I was out of shape. I had no idea what I was getting myself into, but I was excited. Your uniform alone may be enough for people to say, I'm not doing nothing else. I'm going to listen to this officer. If you look disheveled, you will have no respect and they will not listen to you. Or they may try to attack you on the way you look because they think you're not that to be sound. Head is up, their shoulders are back. Okay? Just like that. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Are there flaws? Are there dimples? Are there miscolorings in this little stone? Outside my office, on the heater vent, there is a structure. The structure has everything that's contained in your bags. You are to build an identical replica of that structure. However, this is how you do it. You're going to work on this as a group. Only one of you at a time is allowed to go out in that hallway and look at that. Remember, you are not allowed to touch it. The position it's in is the position it must stay in. This was definitely in the hand. When I was going through the academy, cultural diversity was more in the middle. There wasn't a lot of emphasis on it. Well, I use that as an opportunity to bring these 24 people together who are from all over the state of Pennsylvania and bond them together as a team. I use that time to say there's no I in team, so you're in this together. If one person is struggling, you're all struggling. If you can't relate to me over here, it's a problem, particularly in a multicultural workplace because everybody who comes in is going to bring their differences and if we're not able to bridge the gap and be able to handle those differences it's never going to lead to success. We want to make sure that things are dealt with. We do uh, extensive interviews along with the survey that we give them and so we, uh, they give us information about the course, about the instructors, what they like, what they did not like, recommendations for changes or whatever. And as a result of that, uh, I do a report on my findings, you know, which really leads to us trying to find ways to do changes in the curriculum to make it more user friendly and more in tune for what folks really want and need out there. Every sheriff in the state comes here, so we all know what it's like. And you're all taught the same thing, so it gives you confidence if I'm working with Blair County and I'm from Montgomery County. Pretty much everything we know is the same, so he gives you more confidence. Like, I know what he's going to do. I know he's going to react. Or I, he knows what I'm going to do, how I'm going to react. It's taught me a lot about people, a lot about how attitudes can really affect your experience and a lot of things that you do. And I've learned different things about myself as far as what my, cap my own capabilities are. I've been involved in police training in a number of states, and I'd, I'd have to say this battery of instructors is second to none. Uh, I think anybody listening should understand that it's uh, people who are in the field, come from the field. You're going to be able to steer We have municipal police officers, judges, lawyers, state police officers, people from corrections, from probation and parole. So they really do get a well-rounded education, learning different aspects of the criminal justice system. In law enforcement, 95% or better of your time is very sedentary. It's a small percentage of that time when the, adre when the adrenaline starts pumping and, and you have to really you know, deal with some maybe some really stressful situation. You're putting the body through a lot of stresses and the better 
shape, physical shape that you're in, the better your body can handle that and the better you can handle that particular situation. Yoga is a lot of stretching. It's not easy. A lot of people will think that yoga is a piece of cake, but uh, it, it gets the deputies in tune to their own bodies, what their capabilities are, limitations, and what they can actually do. And it, it enhances the, the flexibility and also gives you a, a kind of a, a relaxed mindset uh, to aid you along with uh, physical training. One more, one more. There you go. And the extended leg is drawing the energy up. Smooth breath, teaching yourself to release. Seeing the strength. If you want, you can take the gaze upward. Inhale, reach. Cross that left elbow, get a good hook there. And then palm to palm. Okay, now open those elbows. Exhale. Nice. The expectation is that if someone goes down, a uniform should be able to respond and provide some level of assistance. Even if that is just standing by, monitoring life signs, and calling uh, advanced medical care. Start looking at Brandon and assessing Brandon. Our first aid training is governed by the Red Cross. They receive certification in uh, AED and CPR, and it's a great certification that they have. That was a four. That was a five. All right, on three. Okay. Alarm, ready? One, two, three. All right. All right. All right. Slide them down. All right, now we need slide to slide them down. Up. Slide them back. Ready? All right, ready? One, two, three. All right. <laughs> we take them through how to roll a good set of fingerprints, which a number of them deputies will use those skills as they become involved in part of the booking center or booking prisoners. And we take it from there up through the basics of how to enter a scene, how to identify what is evidence, you know, how to properly preserve it. We'll do exercises for fingerprints, photography casting shoe prints, tool marks, and we bring it all together within the final day with an all-day crime scene. The main part of this is that they understand what evidence is and where it's found. Could this be evidence? And as a first responder, they have to have the knowledge that if there's a critical piece of evidence, what to touch, what not to touch, uh, before the actual crime scene investigators come in. I had never touched a gun. I didn't know anything about nomenclature of a gun. And that is the makeup of your gun, taking it apart, knowing the different pieces and the different parts, you know, how to put the bullets in. And the most important thing that they teach is safety. They learn an awful lot out of there and, and they just come out praising what, what a good program it is. And it, it's a tip of the cap to the instructor. He does an excellent job out there. there push the door down that's a judge's chamber save the judge everything else is clear don't violate the 180 muzzle letter just go through there go
with defensive tactics, we have a building where there's certain rooms that, that they will have certain scenarios, but we try and put all of that theory together. How do you approach a subject? How do you address them? How do you survey the situation? What type of a person are you talking to? Is it going to become violent? Are they going to be cooperative? How do you handle it? All those things that are running through your mind. It's a safe environment for them to, to do that, to learn that. A majority of the job is going to be involved with handcuffing and securing prisoners. So defensive tactics gives them the basic skills to go out on the street and be able to perform with confidence. Well, they have to understand how to control folks in terms of handcuffing, different kinds of holds and things like that, without violating their rights. Someone um, put a PFA on you. In the defensive tactics, they prepared us for PFA service and doing civil service, going to people's houses, and how to actually approach those situations, as far as knocking on their door and all the way up to actually talking and interacting with them. And Get out! What to be alert for and watch for. I want to see you do that. I want to see you get arrested finally for all the crap you do. So I want to just wait out. Nobody should be standing by policemen this close at any given time. Oh, do not sit. Oh my God. On the ground. Okay, get where you were. Okay, ready? Go. The good thing for the public is that with such training in EVOC, uh, deputies are able to go out and be able to control their vehicle in a variety of stressful situations and at even high speed situations to protect the public. Well, it becomes very, very important that you know how to operate a vehicle effectively in a chase situation because that's one of those moments that it, you can practice it long periods of time and never use it, but once that moment comes, you have to be able to do it. Basically, what I'm teaching you with this shuffle steer, you're going to be able to steer that vehicle and remain in control. You can actually engage in that pursuit at a lower net speed. Patrol Ops is a culmination of our 19-week program. Uh, we take everything from day one and we tie it into one curriculum where they are trained on how to go out, how to fight crime, uh, how to do varieties of different patrol work such as surveillance work, uh, how to do crime prevention, how to look at a building and find out if it's uh, crime preventionally sound. Then you also do mock car stops, where they're actually going out, giving a specific scenario, and actually stopping a vehicle using certain steps on uh, officer safety and public safety to perform that, that traffic stop. They're also encouraged to uh, understand the communication skills on the street, how to interview drivers of a vehicle, how to interview witnesses and suspects of crimes, and again, backing that up with their case law and criminal law as well. Driver, put the car in park and turn it off. Do it now. Put the keys on the roof. Do it now. Come out with your hands up. So yes. You stayed right in behind him? That's good. All right. Why did we have to do that? 
look at the way Mr. Repair is doing this. He's not exposing anything that he doesn't need to. When you come up over, if there's something here that you can't see, what's the first thing they see? Okay. Well, the whole thing is an interactive learning experience for them so that when they get to court in real life, they're not in awe of the situation. And at least gives them some sense of comfortability. If you are a police officer or a deputy sheriff or a state trooper and you're great at uh, going out and arresting speeders but you can't ever win a case in court, what good are you out there? I know that I'm doing it the right way now. And then I, I also know what steps to take in case this happened or that happened. Something happened in the courtroom. There's procedures you have to follow and you know them now. So it's a good thing. There are a lot of different jobs that I've not had any kind of exposure to before coming up here that I'll now be more ready to handle and it really prepares you for what you'd have to do in the job. Now I can go back and uphold that badge that I, that I was uh, sworn into. Sound off today! Never give up, never give in, never let go! About face! Come into it with success in mind. Come into it with a yes I can attitude. Come into it with an attitude of wanting to help others because it's not just about you. You're part of a team. And also go into it with safety in mind, knowing that the ultimate goal is the go home safe. Their success or failure within this academy is dependent on them. We give them all the resources available, whether it be books, instructors, films. It's based on what they put into it. The sooner you get into a rhythm and the sooner you bond with your classmates, and the sooner you just accept being up here, accept it, you'll start having fun and you'll start, want, you'll start coming to class wanting to learn, like, okay, what are we doing today? You'll want to learn. So just, just ride it out for a couple of weeks, have patience, and it'll, it'll grow on you. By keeping an open mind uh, and, and, and just being a sponge when you're here uh, and gathering up all the information, you'll figure out what things work for you and what things don't work for you and then personalize that to you. Uh, and, and I think that would be the message I would send to everybody who's coming here. If it does anything else, it should tell them and convince them that training never ends. What we've given them here is the basic, the very basics of what happens. What they have to do is go back and learn what their policies are within the context of what they've been taught here. We want them to uh, be able to analyze problems, be able to synthesize problems, be able to formulate a reaction to a problem, and to provide the communities with the best form of law enforcement protection that they can have. Welcome to the Deputy Sheriff's Training Academy at the Pennsylvania State University. You just saw a brief overview of the program that is now ahead of you. We recognize that there is significant sacrifice uh, that you will experience during the training by being away from family uh, and loved ones while undergoing a very rigorous a physical and academic training program. In fact, you should be aware that the faculty of the Pennsylvania State University acknowledged the academic rigor of the program as well by awarding it 16 and a half credit hours of transfer credit should you decide to continue your education toward a college degree. Penn State is proud to be a part of your professional development. Uh, we appreciate the sacrifice that you are making in service to your community and we wish you the best in your training and career.